Hello and welcome! It is Gauntlet of Greatness time once again. I'm Randy Bueller, joined as usual by Shadow Detella. How are things, Shadow? Everything is good. No baby yet. <laughs> no baby yet. Still Shadow, still on baby watch. The baby is only 13 days past due at this point. So uh, we'll, we'll try to make this quick. Uh, we are right. rounding out the first round of our Papa Gauntlet. So uh, big thanks once again to Alex Ullman from Gathering Magic who put together a bunch of deck lists for me. These are... 12 of the best decks in Pauper right now, and right now means after Eternal Masters released. So three or four of these are heavily fueled by new cards in Eternal Masters, including the Drake combo deck. This is the biggest buzz around Pauper, is Peregrine Drake is now a common and has slotted into some of those Cloud of Fairies looking decks, and that's actually what we're going to be looking at today. So the Jeskai mid-range deck, which has been around for a while, just lots of nice sort of removal and efficient creatures versus the Drake combo. So, here's the combo. Peregrine Drake is a 2-3 creature for 5. When it comes into play, you get to untap 5 lands. Well, let's say you have a Mnemonic Wall, which when it comes into play, lets you regrow an instant or sorcery, and you play a Ghostly Flicker. Exile 2, I'll just say creatures, return them to the battlefield under your control. If you flicker Mnemonic Wall plus Peregrine Drake, you get five mana at least from the Peregrine Drake, and you get your Ghostly Flicker back. So that was three mana, I got to untap five lands, and then I got back right where I started with a Ghostly Flicker in my hand, Wall, and Drake in play. So that three card combo will generate infinite mana. And if you have any of the many creatures that can draw cards, you can also just draw your entire library. Even Coiling Oracle will get the job done at that point. So. 12 creatures that can draw your library once you switch over that way and the deck does actually enhance its lands like the rest of the deck is basically mana ramp oh god i have i have white bordered wild growth surely surely there's a black bordered wild growth on magic online i don't think i can handle oh no wild growth is only in seventh edition on magic online Ugh, sorry Sorry, guys. You're going to have to put up with these white border wild growths. I love it. Yeah. It's the self-tilting deck list. <laughs> so at that point, infinite mana, draw your library. Basically, your plan is to deck your opponent. You've got one copy of Sage's Road Denizen, so that little flicker fest can mill them. A lot of decks, you can just switch your mnemonic wall to go over to picking up compulsive research and target them to just make them draw their library three cards at a time. It doesn't really matter. And honestly, I'm probably not going to play through it once I uh, set up the combo because this chess guy list, it's got some interaction, right? It's got the ability to lightning bolt, like kill the Peregrine Drake in response to the casting of the Ghostly Flicker could be pretty good. Uh, Galvanic Blast when you get to Metal Graft can be pretty relevant. You know, there's removal in here that can interact, um, but this is not exactly a fast deck. Like, the combo deck is also the faster deck here, and there's no permission in the main deck for this Jeskai shell. You've got, you know, Dispel and Negate hanging out in the sideboard that might get relevant, but uh, I, I, I gotta say, I'm starting to see what all the fuss is about with this Peregrine Drake Shadow. I kind of like Drake's chances in this match. I know. I don't see it. I don't see how you have any chance in this match at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just throwing out just completely blind optimism is what I'm going on. Having a deck that's slower than you and has no permission. And a eight cards I can use to interact with you? Yeah, eight cards I can use to interact with you on your turn when you're going off. All right. Uh, I have a match hosted if you want to come fight me. I don't. Okay, they, so... They, they do say that having children makes your short-term memory loss go. I, I think you're just <laughs> blocking out all memory of the practice match we played. Is, is what I'm doing right there, yes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I won the practice match, right? Like, that's what happened? Yeah, 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 that's what happened. <laughs> All, All right, right I'll see you on the other, other side. side. Good yep. luck. We will Ciao. chat more after the match. All right, yes, I would like to play first. Uh, can't do anything with one land. Nope, not good enough. Uh, wow, is that slow. Huh. So, I can fetch a forest and then put a wild growth on it. I do get a scry, but I don't really get a scry because my I have to Evolving Wilds on turn one. 
getting to three gives me the ability to get back into the game. But I have to draw a land to get there. Wow. All of a sudden. Huh. I think I can do better. I'm going to go to five. <laughs> oh my god. This is even worse. Unbelievable. Wow. That was insane. I, there were literally no lands. All I wanted was a two land hand. It's all I wanted was a two land hand. And I just forgot to play land on turn one. Jeez. I guess I should have kept the, the sixer. I really felt like it was so slow. I guess in that matchup, I can miss my second land drop. In this matchup, I can miss my second land drop and still recover. Maybe I am supposed to keep that sixer. Yeah, I mean, once I mulligan the six, I, I think all the other mulligans are totally reasonable. Like, I had one land with a bunch of five drops and no land, and you just have to keep going down from there. The question is whether Evolving Wild, Wild Growth, and some three mana blue card drawing cards is keepable. That's the one that I could have kept. I don't get a scry because I have to crack Evolving Wilds. I just felt like anything with two lands in it, I guess, I mean that, it's like a really bad two lander. But it was sort of a two lander, like, I'll have two mana by turn three. Keeping that draw. Chat seems split. Some people thought the six card was, six, sixer was horrible. Some people thought the Fiverr? The Fiverr was like land, mnemonic wall, mnemonic wall, Moldrifter, Moldrifter. It's pretty bad. Right, the mnemonic walls are basically blank. And the Moldrifters, I mean, after I top deck two lands, I can start evoking them as divinations. Yeah, his deck is slow enough that I, I kind of feel like in retrospect I should have kept the six. Just because it's bad, but choosing to mulligan means this can happen. All right, if I keep the six, it's bad but functional. His deck is so slow that bad but mostly functional is prob was probably good enough. By the way, this is now a terrible seven card hand, by the way. It's taken us five turns to get here. We've now drawn into yet another terrible hand. Crazy. Yeah, I thought the five was worse than a random four, obviously. That's why I mulliganed it. Interesting. If I own the sixer. If I scry and see that it's a land, I guess I do have the option to just not crack Evolving Wilds. Draw the land, and then I don't get to play my Wild Growth on turn two, probably. Interesting. I think I was supposed to keep the six. That's, that's where I've landed. I was supposed to keep the six. He's up to eight power. So I have two turns left. No problem, we got this. And he's got six cards in his hand. <sighs> Can't hit a land. Can't hit a land there either. I don't think I can mathematically win next turn. Oh, I can block lone missionaries. Why did I not block lone missionaries there? Because I'm not paying attention and I'm dead anyway. Mm. 
Wow. That was a catastrophe. All right. Pulsum Rasa has value in that I can get creatures back from the graveyard if he kills them all. There's one in the main. I definitely want negate. And I have one pulse to make sure catastrophes don't happen. Maybe that's good enough. Is he really going to kill all my stuff? Oh, I can naturalize his oblivion rings and stuff. That's actually got some value, doesn't it? He's got Oblivion Ring and Journey to Nowhere. So being able to steal something has some value. Eh, let's try this. Matchup seemed crazy favorable. Crazy favorable in the first game, in the practice match. But I had more lands in that match. I mean, this is a ton of mana, not a lot of action, but I think you're supposed to keep that kind of draw in a deck like this. And I'm basically depending on Seagate Oracle to find me something, or my first couple draws. Which it's likely to do. Okay, that helps. There is a Peregrine Drake in the system, so I just want to pay three for a Seagate Oracle, right? But I can get the Wild Growth out while I'm at it. Yes. Assume this is, yeah. It's funny. So Crypt Drive Builder has some value. Let's get Utopia Scrolls. Still not really a card drawing card. Untapped land would turn on Peregrine Drake next turn, but I don't have anywhere to go with it. Oh, it's his turn? Funny. He's returning the favor. Favor. Um. Yeah, I can't quite play Peregrine Drake this turn, but I can set up for next turn. <laughs> I mean... It's funny, I kind of want to be down with the Sakura Tri Builder. I'm actually tempted to not sacrifice it here because I don't have anything to do with my Peregrine Drake mana and I have a mana screwed opponent that I can hit for an extra one. I mean, if I do find something to do with my Peregrine Drake mana, I've got six mana anyway. I don't have the wall or the ghostly flicker. Ah, we're going beat down. You're on the team, Sakura Tri Builder. Grats! Course. I immediately draw a card that makes me wish I had an extra land in play. Oh, I can sack it now anyway. Funny. I guess I do that. I can untap, I can get a land and then untap it with the first Drake. Which I think I'm supposed to do. So I lose one mana on that transaction. Blue. <laughs> Here, we'll untap your Great Furnace. No, we're not untapping his Great Furnace. So I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So I'm going to go ahead and Compulsive Research before I play the Drake because I want more information. Nothing. Weird. Um, I mean, whatever. Manuscript opponent, so I'm just going to attack him. Yeah, 
uh, I could have untapped another land, but it doesn't matter. He can't find lands. Fair enough. The aggro plan, good enough. All right. I failed to draw cards, which makes me. Am I supposed? To, I took. I did take out an oracle and a, a couple oracles. A seagate and one seagate, one coiling, to get the negate and the naturalize. The first naturalize has got to be good. I can recycle it with the mnemonic wall once I find it. It's got to be good. The first negate seems good too. I want the one pulse of Marasa. Muldrifter is better than any of the other creatures that draw cards. I mean, I could go... I could be below four mnemonic walls. I just feel like I often get in these scenarios where I've got the combo as soon as I find a mnemonic wall. At least that was happening to me in cold fishing. And, I mean, the mnemonic wall has some value, right? I mean, I have some spells I recycle. I'm going to keep it like this. All right, game three. He's such a... Colossal upset if Jeskai wins this somehow. Jeskai deck does not deserve to go on. It just doesn't. I mean, slow, but it has so many pieces that I'm going to keep it. I mean, I can evoke a Mold Drifter on turn three if I need to. I've got three mana. Yeah, I'm keeping. Let's see if we play a real game. That helps. All right. Archdraw's got all the pieces, and he should be slow enough that we have time, but I don't have a lot of resiliency. I've got, like, one of everything, basically. And no two-play, two-mana play. And he's getting his, his aggro on. I think I just evoke Moldrifter here, right? It's gotta be. Oh, so you get Oracle way better. We basically want mana. That is an interesting question. Is Utopia Sprawl better than Forest? It's got to be, right? Oh, I don't have to spend a mana for it next turn is why it's not better. Weird. Utopia, if I take Utopia Sprawl, it means next turn I have either three mana or four if I draw a land. If I take Forest, then I have four mana, which actually doesn't help me. I'm going to take the Utopia Sprawl. My current plan for next turn is Utopia Sprawl of Forest and then Evoke a Muldrifter. I mean, I'd love to get up to where I don't have to Evoke the Muldrifter or where I can do a Ghostly Flicker trick, but I do have Seagate that I can flicker to dig into my library, so I think we're okay. Cool. I mean, I'm still evoking Muldrifter, right? I just know I I just know I get a land. Yeah, I want to spend. I feel like I want to spend my turn five on other things. Yeah, especially since if I have six next turn. Right. 
Okay. So next turn, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Paragon Drake makes plus two. So if he taps out, I think I just kill him. Right? The question is, can he interact with me? He does have seven cards in his hand. He does have Lightning Bolt in his deck. I can live with 311 goblins. Do you want to tap out? Tap your swift water cliffs, please? No. All right. So I know he's decided to let me untap with Peregrine Drake, so I'm really tempted to just start with that. Yeah, that's got to be right. Because I may actually be able to get in a situation where I can flicker, and if he bolts, I can flicker as a response. So that just works, right? Assuming he doesn't bolt as a response to the trigger, but in the playtesting matches, we figured out that the correct play for him was actually to, uh, to wait. I mean, if he was psychic, he would have bolted there. But I don't blame him. It's like, what happens is if my hand, let's say my hand is Drake, 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 and one ghostly flicker or something, where he wants to he wants to bolt the thing that's being flickered so that it doesn't come back. His, this, if he's got a lightning bolt, though, then I think I get to destroy him with two flickers, right? Right, I can flicker and response flicker. So that part of my plan definitely works. And I think if I don't want, if I play Ghostly Wall, for, if I play Demonic Wall first is where I get to screw myself up. Two, four, five, yeah, then I can't flicker twice. So the Dispel just works, but now he's down to a white mana that I don't think can interact, and everything's fine. So I have six mana, so I need to flicker. Well, whatever. I can let the stack clear. Oh, Prophetic Prism! Ah, shit. I missed the Prophetic Prism. So that was blue mana the whole time. So yeah, that just works. Now I can get those back with my mnemonic walls and win next turn, but he gets to untap, which is all very depressing. Eh, whatever. I didn't see the prophetic prism as blue mana, but I couldn't do anything about it anyway. And having backup mnemonic walls actually feels really good here. Oh, but now my Drake is exposed to, like, Oblivion Ring or Journey? That could suck. Also exposed to Chain Lightning now. Yeah, two Dispels is annoying. He only has, like, two in his whole deck, right? His entire side, that is two of the three from his sideboard. Oh, well. Yeah, three. Oh, he's gonna let me untap. Sweet. So he might have a lightning bolt. Whatever. He might have any number of things. The right play is clearly the monocle for ghostly flicker. Well, I was supposed to evolving wilds. I got myself distracted. So that doesn't matter. Wow, it almost does. I mean, 
I'm just gonna go for this. Because if it works, I win. Drake and it's funny, if he fizzles this, I will wish I had done the Seagate Oracle. And if he doesn't fizzle it, I have another mnemonic wall. I have enough mana, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm, oh, I only get seven. <laughs> Evolving Wilds mana actually matters. Lame. Um, go Coiling Oracle and split the difference. Yeah, I'll just look at the mnemonic wall. Wow. He is all permission all the time. Funny. All right. He keeps cycling looking for more answers. That makes sense. He's not attacking me though, right? Like I, these value creatures are actually good enough to block against him. Evokes a Muldrifter, because he doesn't want to tap out, that makes sense. Six cards. He said go last turn without having a Sorcery Speed answer. Right, he didn't show me Oblivion Ring or Journey or Chain. Of course, he also had to take some of that stuff out for negates and dispels. He should be almost out of that stuff by now. Excellent. Saying go. I like him not finding sorcery speed answers. Awesome. Yes, I have another mnemonic wall. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Drake wins! Drake wins! Drake wins, Shadow! Two to one, like I said. Now, that said, I feel like this is actually a match. Uh, I need a couple of answers, right? But Galvanic Blast can get rid of a mnemonic wall yeah. just by itself. I was right? nervous in that last game, for sure. Yeah, I just wasn't able to draw enough answers. Like, I drew a lot of cards. I just have enough answers. The, the uh, second game, though, I kept a three Galvanic Blast hand and a single artifact land okay. because I had three other artifacts that all cost two mana that drew me a card. So, like, I'm like, I can just get to where I need to be and counter with Galvanic Blast and then continue on through. But I never found that extra land. So that was the thought behind me holding the one land hand on the draw with yeah. three Galvanic Blasts. So to be fair, though, I mulliganed into Oblivion in game one. I No, I agree completely. No, 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 like, I don't think I have a snowball's chance in hell on game one unless you mulligan to two cards or whatever the hell you did. Two. Yeah, I went down to two. That's right. You, you went down to two cards. So, like, I don't think I have a snowball's chance in hell of winning the first game, but I think after boarding, I might have enough to slow you down, but I can't even get past a Pelican Drake. <laughs> right? Like, my creatures cannot get past that. So, like, that's a bit of an issue. Well, it's one of the things you want to kill. What did you sideboard out? Uh, I sideboarded out two of the two one guys. Yeah, the one and, seems like crap, sure. Uh, and Oblivion Rings. Like, um, okay. I was worried that you would be bringing in your artifact removal, and then that would just... My right. removal. Yeah, I brought, in, yeah. I brought in one natural prize. All right, yeah, I was just worried that that would happen, and then you do a surprise auto-kill by killing that, so... Yeah, but I wasn't able to find, like, a Chain Lightning. I wasn't able to find anything um, in yeah, that second did, game. You did draw three of your four counter spells. I did. I certainly did. But like, you know, sure. Yeah. I, I need about 12 more and then I think we got a game. So. Well, I'm glad we get to keep playing with the Drake deck. It definitely seemed like a matchup Drake was supposed to win, but you put up a hell of a fight. I was definitely scared in game three. I So here's the six card hand that started my mulligan into oblivion. My seven carder was a no-brainer mulligan. Here's okay. my six carder. Evolving Wilds is the only land. So effectively, my turn one land comes into play tapped. I have one wild growth. 
So I can go turn one, fetch a forest, turn two, tap it to put wild growth onto it. Sure. Go. So I have two total mana, but, like, I don't actually have them until my third turn. And then my hand is, like, uh, Mull Drifters and Compulsive Researches. It's, like, stuff, three mana ways to draw more cards. Okay. And... My deck is super slow, right? Like, you could scry the top card, see if that's a land. If well, it is, but don't if I crack pop. Evolving Wilds, I shuffle it. Yeah, but you don't have to. Yeah. Right? Like, you just put the Evolving Wilds, play it, and then crack it. Like, what is losing one turn against this deck? Yeah. I think I think that's the right answer. I think I was supposed to keep the six. Because okay. I think that, like, that six is bad, and I think I would bully it against any deck with a clock. But against you specifically... Like, you're just not going to punish me for a slow opening, and I avert Catastrophe by keeping, like, a what amounts to, like, a super awkward two-lander, two-mana draw. Right. Like, I have to convert my deck into just a control deck. I mean, it's already mid-range control. I just have to go even more control. Like, you are not going to get punished at all. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I should have kept the six. 